Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like the clock. And I'm Pearlism, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Coming to you live from Helen's Place. Anyways, it's, uh, I've been getting letters. I've been getting lots of letters. You know who I am, right? Pearlism. Everybody knows who I am by now. I don't need to explain myself. Uh, I, uh, if you don't know, I've been studying the game for years and years and years, um, have a very accurate um, prediction rate when talking about where players may go. It, we're, as you can see on the screen here, we're talking about the draft. And uh, my prediction rate on who's going to make the NHL and who doesn't make the NHL has been very, very good. I'd highly recommend you go look at my uh, previous videos on the topic made some pretty darn good predictions and there's a lot of good prediction people out there um i follow them as well also i do regular nhl stuff on like for instance a good example was everybody said taylor hall was going to go to the colorado avalanche i was i and a few other people were thought clearly that he was going to go to arizona he went to arizona just a good example that's kind of what i do so thought i'd do some mock draft stuff here we have, and like I said, I get your letters. Everybody wanted to know my mock draft. Uh, Terrence uh, Pertruziak from uh, Tan Hill, Nova Scotia, and uh, uh, Jamie Jamie Larn from uh, Boston, Massachusetts, and uh, uh, Cindy Appleby from Miami. Big ones. You guys wrote great letters. We, we, we get them here. We go down to the uh, uh, mail room and we bring up all the letters and we pour them on the letter table and there's much glee and frolic and everybody in the land is happy. So send your letters. Anyways, I wanted to get into some stuff here with the uh, draft coming up in a couple days. So exciting. It's my favorite day in the land. I have a surprise for you for my first pick, actually. Um, but here we're to looking at my NHL dr mock draft. Uh, it's the NHL, my NHL, it's off, off the NHL network. They get all the scouts in the land that they can find, and they all come together and tell them what their favorite picks are, and then they put them into an algorithm or statistic uh, box, shake it all up. And then it comes out like this. And this this is who they this isn't necessarily about who is going to pick each one as much as who the um, who the scouts say is the top thirty one. And then they just put them in there. Um, but although teams' needs and tendencies have loosely been taken into consideration as we see right here okay so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to look at these picks i'm going to talk about each pick that they've ch said where where they're going to go i may talk about i'm going to talk a little bit about what teams may do and i'm going to talk about where i would have certain players uh and not have certain players and such and we'll do the i'll go th right through the first round now here's the big one Number one, it's pretty much a consensus. Everybody is saying Alexis Lafreniere is the number one pick. Well, let me tell you something. If I'm the New York Rangers, I'm going to be in a big, making a big decision here. And I know that a lot of people don't agree with me on this. And we'll see five years, a couple of years down the road if I'm right. But I think... When we look 10 years down the road, when we look back on this draft, I think Yuroslav Askarov is going to be the best player to come out of this draft. And that's saying a lot. Alexis Lafreniere has been compared to Rantanen, which is freaking amazing. Great left winger to have on your team. Awesome. Uh, he's probably the biggest sure bet that there is out there as far as forwards are concerned. Now, 
Yaroslav Askarov, I have heard been just, I, I watch, I read a lot on the draft. I read a lot about certain scouts for specific things. There was a scout that was on Sirius Radio. I have Sirius Radio. And uh, if you have, if you don't know, if you don't know what Sirius Radio is, you can order it. Uh, you can order it. It gives you all kinds of music and it gives you all NHL all the time. There was a scout, and I wish I would have caught his name, but he was a. Um, sc he also trains goaltenders, and works with young goaltenders, and he worked with Vasilevsky directly with Vasilevsky. He was very passionate on the program as he talked about this as well. He says, and I heard this from more than just him, but this one was impressive because he actually worked with Vasilevsky. He says at the same age, Askarov is better than Vasilevsky was in his day. Considerably better, actually. So you think about that. How good is this kid? If he's considerably better, considerably better than Vasilevsky, who already has a Vesna in, in as a young goaltender, we're talking about Dominic Hasek level goaltending here. Unbelievable. So the thing is that the Rangers already already have Shesterkin. The kid looks phenomenal. I think more than likely, anyways, they're going to be taking Alex Lafreniere here. Um, but I seriously think I've heard rumors that they might draft, go down and pick lower. Uh, and if that's the case, it could be because they're looking at a scar off too. And they're hoping in the, these teams follow something that a lot of teams do follow. And a lot of people will say now, a lot of people are disagreeing with me is you never take a goaltender number one. But if you've got a guy that you think is Dominic Hasek, you do. Okay. Simple as that. Hoshik was the best goaltender ever play the game. There I said it. Next pick is the LA Kings. Now they have Tim Stutzla here as the number two pick. And I'm going to say if we don't go again with Askarov, because LA's got one fantastic goaltender, young goaltender in Peterson here too. They love him a lot. So, the, it's going to be between Stutzla and Byfield. And I'm telling you, it's really hard to pick between the two. Quinn Byfield could be the next Kopitar. I've heard him compared to Kopitar. Big, mobile center, can play both ways already very well. Not as creative as Tim, Tim Stutzla. Tim Stutzla has been compared to Patty Kane. Patrick Kane. Okay. Now, I have my doubts that Stutzla is going to get be that good. But he's far more creative than Quinton Byfield. The thing about Tim Stutzla is he's got the type of game that can create like Patty Kane can't. He's going to give you something that Quentin Byfield can't in that regard. But Quentin Byfield's going to get you that big center that every team really loves to have, especially in the playoffs. L.A. already has one of those, though. Um, and uh, they don't really have a guy like Tim Stutzla. However, I still think they're going to go with Quentin Byfield here. And... I probably would too. I probably would too. They have Velarde. I forgot to mention that. Velarde is the, but he can, Velarde can play wing. So if we put Velarde on the wing and they got Turcotte coming in, I mean, they're going to be stacked, totally stacked up the middle here if they take Quentin Byfield. I understand Stusla. They say he's a center here. A lot of people are projecting him as a winger. So I'm going to say they take Byfield just because why not overdo it with size up the middle for a playoff run? We just saw what can happen with a team like Dallas that had size everywhere. Even though they're getting outplayed, they're still able to tire out their opponent. I get it. So now we go to Ottawa. Ottawa for sure here takes Stutzla. 
what you, you're asking me right now, well, what about Askarov? What are we about Askarov? I probably already take him. I, if I'm the Rangers, I hum and haw about it, but I probably take Askarov anyways. Either that or I trade down with Ottawa, get a whole bunch of, uh, see how many picks I can get, and take Askarov in number three. Take all those picks and get all the other players, and then you can play, you can do whatever you got to do with Shesterkin and Eskarov as far as trades and all that is concerned. You're going to get huge value out of Shesterkin anyways. And uh, yeah, that's probably what I do. Tough tough call though, because that's a lot to do when you can just take Lafreniere. Now Detroit here definitely should take Eskarov. Absolutely no doubt about it. The reason why they have Cole Perfetti there is Detroit has almost made it known to everybody that they're going to take Perfetti. But lately, I've been hearing about them taking Rossi. They've been spending a lot of time with Rossi. Cole Perfetti has said some really weird things in the media, uh, saying something like, you know, I wouldn't want to go to a dump and chase team and stuff like that, being kind of immature. And it might have been turning Stevie Eiserman's ears, their eyes a different direction, and they take Rossi here. Um, I personally would probably take Rossi here. He's a safer pick uh, if you're not going to take Gaskarov. I would for sure take Gaskarov here if I'm Detroit, though. No doubt about it. If it's me, I would take Gaskarov. Maybe they will. Number five, we have Lucas Raymond. Now, I think, I believe that if Gaskarov is here, Ottawa is going to take this guy. Now, I, and I, I understand that uh, that they both, they really like Lucas Raymond. And a lot of players, really a lot of teams really like Lucas Raymond. Lucas Raymond is a lot like um, Mitch Marner. So um, a lot of people believe he's a lot like Mitch Marner. Huge on them. There's been, uh, for some reason, I wouldn't be doubt if Detroit take him. But I have a feeling if Ascaroff is here, they're going to take him. Anaheim, if Lucas Raymond is there, I'm pretty sure they're going to take Lucas Raymond, although it's going to be tight between Jamie Drysdale because Jamie Drysdale is a lot like Makar, a lot of people are saying. You see the depth of this draft? Now you're asking, okay, where's Cole Perfetti going then? I think Cole Perfetti is going to fall because of a lot of the things he said. Cole Perfetti has probably got the best hands in the draft. The guy's got sick hands, super sick hands. But his attitude is called into question in the skating, and he's on the small side. If he, if, if he didn't do those attitude things, he's probably picked already. Maybe Detroit picks him now. Maybe Detroit still will pick him uh, now because he's, he's from that Detroit on, like, just across the border in Canada, I believe. Detroit area and there's a lot of connections in Detroit there and they like to pick guys like that anyways So I say they take Anaheim takes Lucas Raymond. They need 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 some scoring on the wing there If they don't take Lucas Raymond here They take Holtz One of those two, but I think it's going to be Lucas Raymond number seven they, they have New Jersey taking uh, Jake Sanderson here. I don't think they will do that. I think Drysdale could, will be there. And then they will take Drysdale here. I do think Eskarov is going to be picked a lot higher than they do in this draft, by the way. Um, so Drysdale would go there. And then Buffalo. Personally, I think they're going to trade this pick. If Rossi's there, though, maybe not, because they need that second line center, and he could be ready really soon. I think he takes, they take Rossi here. Uh, I'm surprised, actually, after, did I say, no, sorry, I said they were going to take, Detroit was going to take Rossi. Rossi's off the board. What am I talking about? So anyways, uh, they're going to take Jake Sanderson, maybe Perfetti, Seth Jones, Askarov. I think, or Seth Jones, or Seth Jones, Seth Jarvis. A lot of players they can pick here, or Alexander Holtz. 
more than likely they'll go with Alexander Holtz if they take this pick. I think they're going to trade this pick. I think they're going to. I, I think there's going to be a trade. My guess is it's going to be Goudreau from Calgary for this pick. Calgary is going to take Lundell or Holtz, something like that. That's my guess. So we'll see what happens, but that's my guess. Because they want to win now. They, they so want to make sure that Eichel is happy, and they're happy, and their fans are happy. They've been doing so poorly for so long. It's just wearing thin. I just have a feeling they're going to trade this pick. Calgary would make a lot of sense. Calgary could take a um, Alexander Holtz here, sign Taylor Hall like they want to do, and I don't know, find a way to get a center. <laughs> that's going to be the biggest problem with that. But uh, that's let's pretend Buffalo does pick here. I think they take Alexander Holtz to eventually play with Eichel on that right side. Alexander Holtz is a huge, has a huge shot has a 30 to 35 goal upside, can play all areas of the ice. It would be huge for Buffalo if they do take that pick. Now, Sanderson falls. And I think Sanderson should fall. It's going to be probably between Anton Lundell and Sanderson here for Minnesota. Uh, if I'm Minnesota... I probably take Sanderson here. They need to start rebuilding their defense. It's getting older now, uh, but I have a feeling they're going to take Anton Lundell because they also need centermen really bad. So um, if all things are being equal, they take Lundell. If Sanderson falls to Winnipeg, they take Sanderson right there for sure, no doubt about it, all over it. Barely fall, practically falling them, falling over their, uh, falling over themselves to get up to the podium, to get a defenseman in that Winnipeg team that needs defense really bad. Uh, Sanderson has been improving so fast; it's crazy. A lot of scouts are thinking he could be ready in one year after one year in the minors. So. Uh, That'll be interesting to see how uh, to see what happens there. Or sorry, in college, he might end his college career early and go to pros sooner than a lot of people expect. So I would say Winnipeg will be taking that for sure. Nashville, I like the play. I like the person that they have there already. Um, they may go with. Uh, they may go with Dawson Mercer here, but they want a goal scorer. Quinn has shown to score over 50 goals uh, in in junior. The skating, I, I'm not as big a fan of Quinn as a lot of people are, but I have a feeling Nashville Ted does take him in that spot, if not Seth Jarvis, because they've never been one to shy away from smaller players. The Florida Panthers then would definitely take Seth Jarvis, I think. But I have a feeling that they'll go off the board and go for Gundler. I just have that feeling they're going to go for a shooter in that spot because they've got Huberto and uh, um, Barkoff, pass, great passers, and they need a shooter since they're not going to be bringing back Hoffman. And it doesn't sound like they're bringing back to Donoff. So, shooter is going to be huge there. Just my lean. If Seth Jarvis falls down to Carolina, they take Seth Jarvis. Could be the steal of the draft. The guy put up like two points a game. Man, if he's as good as it looks like he can be, even as a small player, and you've got Aho and... Uh, Why Sesvechnikov and oh my gosh, what a freaking lineup that'll be. I was hoping that Dil Seth Jarvis would fall to the Oilers here, um, but likely they won't. I don't think Dylan Holloway should be that high, so I'm going to put him lower here. If um, 
with Gundler off, Dylan Holloway gone, I have a feeling that the Oilers are going to go for Dawson Mercer here. Da Dawson Mercer is a guy who, who it's just, they're a little uncertain about his offense. Um, he can play center and he can play wing. I think his offense is going to grow. I think it's going to be okay. Um, the other thing, the other picks that they may go for is Caden Goulet uh, or um, Schneider here, but I, I doubt it. I, they, they've already added to their defense quite a bit um, in previous drafts. I just have a feeling, don't know why, but they're going to go for Dawson Mercer here. Um, it just seems like an Oilers type pick. He is progressing very fast. He's got good speed. He can play all areas of the ice. Good, solid player. It's a pretty safe pick, but it's just kind of, I have a feeling that's who they're going to pick. Toronto, then it's been talked for days. It's not even, if he's available, they're going to take Schneider. Braden Schneider. And I think they're kind of forced to. Either that or William Volander, who I think is way lower in this draft than he should be. Um, did I miss somebody? No. Okay. So the, now, uh, sorry about that. Um, Montreal. Montreal, almost where the, the name that's there right now. It's either going to be Rodi and Amirov or Noel Gunler, I believe. They could go off the board here and pick up Brendan Bryson. Brendan Bryson, I've heard many times, uh, they, they really love the guy. He's a solid, uh, grinding type player. They don't have too many of those. And his offensive upside is actually pretty darn good. People are uh, Most scouts are unsure about how high his upside could be. But if they're thinking that his upside could be very good, he could turn out to be a steal. Watch out for that. But I'm going to go for the shooter with Noel Gunler here. Chicago Blackhawks would like a defenseman here. Um, I think they're going to take Goulet. I think Goulet is going to go off the board here. And Goulet is way low in this draft. But I think there's... So that's 23. It's not that far off the board. Um, Chicago's known to wanting to take these big defensemen that are a bit of projects. They need it really bad. They've got a couple young defensemen coming up right now, but they could definitely use a lot more. Their forwards are starting to pile up pretty good. They could use some defensemen. Now, this being said, if they think there's somebody on the board that's better than them, they will do that. They're not just going to take forward position. If they think Maverick Bork or, uh, you know, another good one here, if, if anybody, I'll, I'll get down to that when we get down to that in a second here, when we get there in a second here. Um, another one they could go with is Jacob Perot here. I just have a feeling that they'll go with that skilled Savardian type guy. He kind of has that feel to him. But I'm going to say Gaden Kool-Aid is the guy that they're going to take there. New Jersey Devils probably wishing that Goulet was still on the board. Um, but they did get Jamie Drysdale already in this draft, doing it the way I said that they would do it. So uh, I'm going to go with... Um, Lucas Reichel. Lucas Reichel is a two-way guy. It's a New Jersey type pick all the way. Totally New Jersey type pick. Pretty safe, but has offensive flair, can play all areas of the ice. Seems to be, to me, the most likely pick for New Jersey there. Calgary, I think for sure, take Jacob Perot here. Either that or Connor Zard. Jacob Perot or Connor Zari. I'm going to say Connor Zari. They, I think they take Connor Zari. Connor Zari is probably going to be a third line guy uh, who can play both ways, who can give them offense. They do need centers. It would seem likely to me that that's who they will take. Um, New Jersey's next pick, I think they'll go off the board a little bit and take 
William Volander, which I don't even think is off the board, because I have a feeling he could turn out to be one of the steals of the draft. Um, Columbus would then take Brandon Bryson almost for sure. It's got Columbus all over it. Or, and this is when we get down to Hendrix Lapierre, if anybody has an inkling that this guy's head's all right from the concussions, that he's going to be perfectly fine, he could go anywhere up here. Seriously, like, I could see Minnesota taking a chance on him. I could see Nashville taking a chance on him. He is going, he was supposed to be almost like a Bergeron clone. This guy has got so much talent. He had a couple concussions, and two concussions, I guess. And that's just been a huge problem. Uh, and, and it should be a problem, because is he going to be able to, is he going to get hit in the head again? All of those things like that. I have a feeling with the concussion protocols that go on now, and you've seen it with Crosby where he's had concussions and he's come back and he's did well. I have a feeling somebody's going to take him higher here. I probably would. To tell you the honest truth, I wouldn't think he would get past the Oilers. I think that I think the Oilers will take a chance on him. I think Carolina could take a chance on him. Um, there's so many teams like if he's red, if if anybody thinks he's not going to have concussion problems in the future, he's going to go way higher than that. The New York Rangers, I'm sure, will take a chance on him here if they don't trade this pick. Uh, the Phil Phil this leads us to the Philadelphia Flyers, and um, they're not going to be too happy with what's been available here. Uh, I know they're not because they're looking for a shooter, and if you notice, I've said that all of the shooters are pretty much gone here. Um, I think they're going to take Brandon Bryson if this is available. Uh, as you can see, Jacob Parole is, fa is falling down here a little bit uh, because he's smaller. There's a lot of question marks about his defense. And uh, that's about the only reason why. Brandon Bryson is a Philadelphia Flyers type pick. Colorado, if they don't trade this pick, I'm sure are going to go with William Volander almost positive if he's going to be there. I could see Volander going way up all over the place here in, in many parts of this draft. St. Louis Blues, for sure, though, will take their chance on Jacob Perot. They're going to need to replace some of their offense because some of their guys are getting older now. Uh, best, that's the best guy on the board probably right now. Through all of this, there's going to be guys that are going to be taken high uh, that are not in this uh, but I wanted to talk about all the ones that the NHL draft people had on here. I'll, I'll, in the second round, I'll show you some guys that I think might go higher. John Jason Paterka could go higher too. A lot of people love this guy, and to tell you the honest truth, I'm not sure why. It's just that he get, plays a good two-way game. I don't think he could go higher, but New Jersey could take him in the 18th spot. He's that type. He's their type of player. Uh, in the 20th spot, I mean, but I already took a guy that was their type of player, a little higher in the draft, and uh, in Lucas Reichel. Maybe they do something like that. Maybe Calgary takes him. It, it, it's, it's weird. I've seen them all over the place, but there are a lot of teams that really like Paterka. I do know that. Ottawa gets, um, I believe they would go off the board here. I'll talk about that in a second. Vegas Probably goes with a defenseman off the board here as well. Dallas Stars, the 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 uh, I think they'll go with the player that's right there, the, either that or Paterka. Paterka, somebody like that. It's tough when you get down in these parts because there's a lot of teams that can really like these guys. There's not much difference in each player. They just have different skill sets, but they all have holes. Um, and San Jose, again, I'm going to talk about some of the guys in the second round here that I think could go in the first. Uh, and I'm not going to go through everybody here, but I'm just going to go through a couple. Marat Kuznudinov could go even a lot higher. This guy has got skill. He's small, but he plays super big. And he's very fast. 
His hands are sick. I think he's a first rounder for sure. I would be blown away if he falls to the second round. Something I didn't talk about about a lot of these guys is that uh, they uh, have a tendency to fall if they're Russian because of the fact that they can head off to the KHL at any time. They use that in contract disputes and stuff like that. So um, because of that, these guys can fall, but I don't think this kid's going to fall like this. I really think they're going to go up. I could see Vegas taking him. I could see a lot of teams going off the board for him. Ozzy Weisblatt, also such a, he, he's great two-way player, great attitude, uh, gr works the boards really well for his size. Offensive upside is pretty darn good. I think he could go in the first as well. Jean-Luc Foudy, Foudy, also same type of thing. Most of these other guys, I would say, are somewhere in the second round. Ryan O'Rourke could go very high. It all depends on what you think the, his offensive upside could be. But he's big, 6'2". People love big defensemen. He can skate. I could see him going, let's go back to the first round here. I could see him going to a couple, a couple like Ottawa Senators could take him. Uh, San Jose Sharks need to rebuild their defense. Uh, I can even see Calgary going off the board and taking them to tell you the honest truth. Anyways, I've got 31 minutes here, my lord. We have to finish her off. This has been good times. Tell me what you think about who I picked there. I might have missed some people. I did it off the, off the cuff. Kind of have some time uh, between doing my podcast and everything. I wanted to throw it out there. Hope you all enjoyed it. Tell me who you think your team's going to take, what trades might happen. I'll be down there to discuss it with you. Till next time, hit the subscribe and the bell, why don't you? And have a great day. Lots of love to you.